good, I was going to say good night. <laughs> well, that's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I thank the Lord for our lives during that terrible weather. Let's just say a prayer. Father, we just thank you for allowing us to meet again in your house and to share your word. May we hide in our hearts, Father God. May we be able to share and be able to discern and partake of it, Father. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Um, I've really been um, studying this for, not really, I guess, studying it, but it, I've really been pondering, I guess, uh, this in my heart for years, I guess you would say, and um, kind of um, getting different uh, studies on it, but um, it's about a balance between uh, faith and um, grace. And this thing keeps getting lower and lower, this um, thing right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was my eyes, but I kept thinking. <laughs> How about right? Yeah. About the right there. Right That's there. good. There we go. Okay. okay. I think that'll do it. <laughs> uh, and I'm not. I'm just. Uh, this would be like uh, food, and you just put it in your heart, and and uh, you go to the Word and just um, study it, and and. Um, uh, whatever you you receive and uh, match it with the word. I'm just saying. Just this is not thus saith. Uh, this is not uh, the book of Naomi. If this is uh, you get into the word and and see what you what you uh, get out of it and match it with Pastor Bob and. And, but this is just what I've been pondering for a while now, and it, it's about the faith versus grace. And and I've noticed that there have been like two groups of people um, that uh, they've been going to an extreme of uh, faith, a, a real extreme of faith, or either they're doing a real extreme of grace. And um, we have to be careful with that. But what it really is, it's uh, a matter of uh, either you're trusting God or you're trusting the promises with on yourself is what it, what it is, basically. Uh, you can either trust yourself for the promises that God has for you or you can trust uh, God for it. You can either trust yourself for your righteousness or you can trust God for your righteousness. Um, there's a difference between the works of faith and the works of the law. Um, faith without action is dead. But action without faith will kill you. Um, trying to act out on something because that is what you desire or what you want, and you're acting out on that, but it does not have faith in it, that will hurt you. Uh, but you know that the Bible says, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. It doesn't say that actions is the victory that overcomes the world. And uh, we have somehow belittled uh, believing. And uh, just like if I were to ask um, Linda, uh, would you 
if you don't mind, would you come here and sit in this chair right here? I'm just going to ask you to sit right here. Boom. She didn't hesitate a bit, did she? She just sat right there. Why? Because she believed, she knew that she could sit in that chair. She believed that she could sit in that chair. Right? She had no problem with that. And so, you can get up anytime you wanted to, but I just wanted to make a point that she, <laughs> that she just, I just asked her to come and sit in the chair. She believed she could sit in the chair, and she came and sat in the chair, and the, no problem. And uh, so, we have to just believe. And when we get, and we get real solid on that, that we believe, after a while, after we get real solid about it, then we can birth an action. She birthed an action out of her, she was real solid about it. She had no, no problem believing that she was going to sit in that chair. So she come right on in here and sat down on, on it. Let's look at uh, John 1, 17. And, and I'm going to read it in the um, King James first. And then in the Amplified. 117. There was one part in the Bible where it says, what, do I, what must I do to be saved? And he said, what? Believe. Okay, let's see. One seventeen, if I can find it. Why am I having a problem? Oh, it's okay. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth, so why you suppose it says grace and truth? Because grace is truth, came by Jesus Christ. Um, and what, what's the next verse? No, the... Still in the same. Okay. Now the Amplified, what's it say? The Amplified says, For while the law was given through Moses, grace, which is unearned, undeserved favor, and spiritual blessing and truth came through Jesus Christ. Un, so grace is unearned, undeserved favor and spiritual blessing and truth came through Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. Grace is truth. And people who don't understand grace will always have a problem with sin. I'm not saying that People that don't understand grace have a problem sinning. I'm saying they have a problem with sin because they don't believe that Jesus has forgiven them. So they have a problem with that. The grace of God is unmerited, unearned, and undeserved favor. The grace of God is extended or gifted to you. It's something that you did not work for. You, you don't deserve it. You did not earn it. You didn't work for it. It was given to you because God wanted you to have it. It was an expression of his love to you. It was an all-finished work of Jesus Christ. It was, a, it, it was an expression of his love. 
Now let's see, you could say and recognize that, you know, you're healed. And uh, what would happen if you were to go around and you would, would say that you, you deserve the things that you have? Well, the first thing that would probably happen, some guy over here would say, well, well, I don't, I don't deserve it. He would say, well, I don't deserve it. And, uh, but love and favor is available to anyone who what? Believes. So love and favor is for anyone. Um, but then we don't need to get the attitude that will bless God. Then I'm just going to, I think I'll just sit here and uh, I'm, hallelujah, I'm under grace, the grace of God. So I'll just sit here and I'm just going to let him hit me with it. That's not the way that works, people. Uh, just because we're under that grace that's not the way it works at all. All things have been made available to you that pertains to life and godliness. That's what the Bible says. And everything you need in this life is available to you too. So do we, do we just become uh, passive Christians? God forbid. Everything has been available. Yes. And Jesus done it all, and he, and he has. And the works have been finished, and it was. And Jesus has it all, and he has. But let's, he's already done everything, right? So how do we get this to become manifest into our lives? And how do we get... It to show up in our physical world today. Um, we don't want to uh, try to be doing something to get this to happen. Um, because he said what? Uh, it, it is finished. When he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. I mean, what if I said, uh, or Pastor Bob, um, would you be seated? Will you please be seated? Sit down, please. How frustrating would that be if I asked you to do something that you already did? That's, that's frustrating. So we don't want to be trying to do something that has already happened. Uh, I can't do anything to provide healing for myself. I can't do anything to to have deliverance for myself or to have wholeness come to me or to have uh, prosperity uh, for myself um, because Jesus has already done all that for me. Um, uh, but I'm working on believing that I can receive what Jesus has done already for me. Um, do y'all understand what I'm saying? Um, I can remember a time that uh, I can remember like it was yesterday, and this was 30-something years ago, and I was, it, it really brings chills to me because some people, I audibly, uh, some people probably don't want to believe me, but I was down on my knees uh, in a wooden chair in my in my room, and I, um, I had such compassion for my brother, and he, he was on the streets. And um, I fell on my knees, and I was just pleading with God, and I, and, and I was weeping and wailing. And, and I said, God, please save my brother. Please save my brother. And I heard his voice say to me, what more can I do, Naomi? I saved him. I died on the cross for him. So I was praying wrong. And then I began to change my prayer life. And I said, Father, please help him to receive what you did for him. 
you know, help him to receive it. Send somebody along his path that can that he can receive from. So sometimes we pray wrong. We need to have grace based prayers. Sometimes we we uh, sometimes we we don't need to be begging God to do something He's already done for us. Um, now there again, this is Naomi, you know, speaking the way that I see what God is telling me, uh, and and this is the way I see it. I mean, He has done all the finished work. I mean, He's done all that He said it's finished. What more can he do? He died at Calvary 200 years ago for us. He, did, he, took, he gave his life. He took on the stripes. He did all of that for us. So we could have all of these things. That we could have deliverance. That we could have wholeness. We could have prosperity. That we could have all these things. And we need to have the faith. We need to do the things that we need to do. To build up our faith. So that we can be in a position. To receive. Um, and to believe. Uh, so that we can um, get have the healing and the deliverance and the and prosperity. Um, Romans and believe me, believing is not a small matter. It is not a small matter by no means. I'm not standing here to say that it's just just believe. Because it's not like that at all. It's not a small matter by no means. Um, he gave us that promise 2,000 years ago when he said it is finished. Uh, and so I'm saying, Father, I believe and I'm confessing your word. This is what I'm doing to, to my part. Father, I'm believing and, and I'm confessing your word. And I'm meditating on your word. And I'm putting myself in a position to, to receive. Amen. So let's go to Romans 4, 16. And first let's, let's uh, see it in the uh, King James. For Romans 4, 16. Okay, it says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise. What is the promise? That we prosper, that we have all of life. Um, prosperity, healing, and, and all of that. Um, might be sure to all the seed, all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Now listen to this. Who is the father of us all? Is that the end? That's not the end of it, is it? Is that the end of it? Okay. Now let's switch over to... Um, to the um, Amplified. Please. As it is written, I have made you the father of the Amplified of 16. 416, the Amplified. Therefore, inheriting the promise, and y'all know what the promise is, the outcome of faith and, to, and faith depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace, unmerited favor 
to make it stable and valid and guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to devotees and adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who is thus the father of us all. So it is to everyone. Everyone. So we are building up our confidence of what I believe, this is what I'm doing, what I believe was done 2,000 years ago. We're to enter into the rest. We're not laboring to get healed. We're laboring to rest. Amen? We, we got to get our faith on a high level. Um, li we live in a world where we're hearing voices and images that are coming to us that are competing with what we're having the faith to believe, what we're believing in. Um, maybe y'all are not, but they're... There are things that are that we're seeing that the opposite of what we're standing believing in. Um, getting a hold of what he has already done. Every man and woman will have a choice to choose the world system or God's system. And I choose God's word and his system, first and foremost. You are a product of the choice that you make. What you believe, what you say, your faith, what you meditate on. And everybody's got faith, because the Bible says everybody has a measure of faith. So you might as well have the right, right faith on the right thing. Um, Faith move, moves you. He said it's finished. What more can he do? Faith moves me, and it'll move you in a place to receive. Faith will move you out of a place of doubt into a place to believe. Amen? But now don't throw away your praying there's a carnal man and there's a spiritual man the carnal man is moved by his senses and we, our five senses our five senses are subject to change at any time spiritual man is moved by the spirit but we have to pray grace-based prayers like it's already done. When we pray, we should be praying thanksgiving and praise and in tongues. That's the way I see it. And when you pray two minutes on the situation or the issue at hand, then you got 30 minutes or whatever to thank him and praise him and 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 um, speak in tongues, which in the book of Jude it speaks about praying in the Holy Spirit, which is edifying your your spirit, your soul, and your body, and. Well, for instance, you say, well, can I pray, can I ask him for something? Well, sure you can. Let's say you want um, a raise. Well, you don't have to beg him, you know, you could just say, uh, well, that concerns money. So, I mean, you can't go to the bank and receive money unless you make a deposit, right? 
So you don't even begin to ask God anything about money unless you've made a deposit. So you have to plant a seed, right? So um, if you do that, then you just say, you know, Father God, you know, that God, I'm, I want you going to bless me so I can be a blessing. Um, I've sowed a seed, and, and I know you're going to bless me and uh, so I can bless others. And, and I thank you, Father God. Just thank him for it ahead of time. You know, I thank you that, that uh, I'm going to get this job. And, uh, you know, you thank him ahead of time. You don't, you don't beg him. Oh, God, please, you know, like that. Because that don't, has, you can't move God because he, he's already done all that he can do. No matter what we do, it's not going to move him to do anything more than what he's already done. Is the way I can read it in the word and the way I can see it. Because we just have to thank him for what he's already done. And I thank you for whatever, what, I thank you Lord for the grace that you gave me at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And I thank you Lord that you're covering me. And I thank you Father God that you know, for your, your blessing me, and do y'all understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> and so that is the way he works, and you can ask him for things, and, um, and he answers prayers, Amen. and, and I'm thankful for that, and, uh, I, I believe I receive, uh, grace made it available to me, and, um, I'm blessed to, ble to be a blessing. And uh, we don't have to beg him. And, uh, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm glad that uh, I was able to uh, come into that knowledge. Because I spent a many, a many, a many a night, you know, um, begging and pleading and um, not understanding. And I'm glad that I was able to uh, understand God's word. And he d will, when you read his word before you read it and you ask him to help you to understand, he will. Because he's faithful and, and he's just and he, he will show you. So y you can pray and, and that is that line of order of thanksgiving, showing him that you're thankful and praising him, and then praying in tongues or praying in the Holy Spirit where you, you're not praying, you're praying the unknown, you don't know what you're praying, and he's taking care of it, and then, you know, not spending all that time in, um, in the situation. Uh, he likes that. He honors that. And, um, and I hope you, you got something out of... Uh, I know I did when I, whenever I got that. So, and thank you so much. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>